Well, hi folks, it's now the first day of July and uh, summer's still not arrived yet. We've had some amazing weather last week or so. I actually had five inches of rain in 24 hours up here, so I've never seen anything like it. Anyway, I'll just give you a quick update on how things are progressing. And as you can see, the peas, got tons of flowers on now. These are Hearst grain shafts, so in another couple of weeks I should be getting some peas. And plenty of them by the looks of it. If you remember I did that video plant transplanting out the leeks, they've all taken really well now. The holes are still still empty so they've not filled up with soil so there'll be no grit in between the leaves when they do start to grow. So they look good. And the kale, kale's really flying along. I've been taking a few leaves now. But they've got, got a couple outside that something's been having a go at, right in the middle, just nipping off the central growing tips. I don't know what it is. It's not slugs or anything like that. So it could either be birds. I've seen some little like um, pied wagtails and things like that in here but whether they eat kale or not I don't know so anyway it's a good job I netted those up whatever's doing it and these are the old uh, shallots that I grew from seed they're absolutely massive I don't know how big they'll be as a single shallot but we'll see soon and my lettuces are absolutely flying away they just seem to love the uh, the wet weather the ones the frilly ones are not quite ready but the cost ones a little gem They'll have a nice little sweetheart in them now, so I'll be taking some of those pretty soon. And then the beetroot, just a half roll beetroot. I saw them in two sort of separate successions. As you can see, I've got some more young uh, beetroot and lettuces coming over there, just to follow on from these. Carrots have been a bit disappointing this year. I've got loads of exhibition ones growing that are brilliant, but the ones in the ground, if you can see, there's like a patch up there and a few patchy ones there and nothing in the middle, so... I've noticed again something nibbling these off, so whether it's the same thing, it's not slugs, but I don't know what the hell it is, so anyway, we'll see. And these are the garlic, still growing, still really green. A lot of people have got a lot of rust this year, well, it's you know really due to the damp and wet conditions that tends to cause rust, but thankfully I've got away with it this year. It looked like they might be getting it at the start, but uh, never seemed to materialise. And this is the broccoli, it's just about finished now, it's onto the secondary heads. I've picked the main heads off and these are the side shoots coming. So there'll be just a few more meals out of that. But they've been a real success this year because they're absolutely tiny plants and they're really quick to grow. So, you know, like you don't have to wait till the end of September till, to pick them like some varieties. And you don't need to space them out further than a foot apart. So they're a real compact, space saving, excuse me, variety. So on a second row of peas, I'm hoping to get these up before September because we really suffer with mildew here and the variety grow are quite susceptible to mildew so if I can get a second crop before September we should get a few more. And my Brussels sprouts, like I say I've never ever had any success with Brussels so I'm giving it one final attempt at these. I've grown them a lot earlier this year. So we'll see if they succeed. Now with all the rain, as you can see, this is just what's fallen out of the sky, it's nearly filled my barrels up. And because I collect water off my polytunnel with these little, it's like a little stick on gutter. They're amazing how much water you collect. These are 500 litre tubs and they're just full up. So I've got nearly 2,000 litres of uh, free water in a day the other day. Anyway, all the poppies have come out, which uh, they've got a real battering in the wet. They don't seem to like it, but they do brighten the place up. Anyway, we'll go back, have a nip into the polytunnel and see how the monsters are getting on. Anyway, we'll start off with a bit of good news. Remember the bare rooted strawberry plants are planted a few weeks, well, about six, I think it's about six weeks ago, as little pathetic little specimens. Well, I've got some strawberries on and they're going ripe, and they're a decent size as well. It's quite a few. And considering they were so cheap, they're amazing, you know. Decent sized strawberries. I pulled all my shallots up outside, so they're all inside drying out a bit now. Like so, just keep the rain off and try and get some breeze on them to dry them out. And then we've got the old French beans are growing up and up and up. They're growing up to the top of the canes now. Now I'm training them on strings across. Because what happens is when you get beans, they're dead easy to pick the later ones. It gives you about an extra six foot of bean, well, of vine length. And then the beans just hang down and they're dead easy to pick. Just like picking bunches of grapes. So not only do you get them all the way up the stem eventually, but you get them across and above your head. So they're really easy to pick. I've been taking courgettes now for ages. As you can see, loads of courgettes on. They absolutely love it in here. They thrive in the humidity and the warmth. So, and talking of thriving, that's my uh, tobacco plant, which is now getting off a six feet tall. 
which I would never have guessed when I grew it about three months ago from tiny little seeds so it's been quite a revelation a bit of coriander there which is absolutely going mental as well so I like to chop that up and freeze it actually in little ice cubes and things like that so you've got like a decent supply of it all winter because you can never eat as much as you can grow because there's absolutely tons of it and then the cucumbers they're starting to grow and climb up and this is the giant onion I'm putting to seed and it's got some amazing really quite fascinating heads on you see the little flies and bugs flying off that's what I want to try and pollinate them so then I should get my own seed and these are my giant onions from the old uh, Peter Glazebrook, the bloke who grew a 18 pound onion and they're really doing well now, they're starting to bulb up so I'll hopefully get a really big one there you go, there's another tobacco plant, they're just taking too much room up it's nearly as high as my door and these are my show carrots, they're getting enormous so. and these are the onions, there's two lots, I'll start off with the smaller variety these are the Kelsey's that I'm hoping to grow for Harrogate in the sort of one and 1 to 1.5 kilo class where you need to select five matching ones and then on to the big ones and as, they can, as you can see they're absolutely enormous I had a few problems early on with the really hot weather we had where a couple of them went and split they start growing double necks when it gets too hot sometimes but apart from that they're knocking on about two and a half pound now some of them in fact if I just go around I'll try and give you a bit of scale just to show you how big they are That's one of the bigger ones, as you say, look at the size of the bull. But I'm hoping to get them, you know, out to there about six pounds, hopefully, five or six pounds. But touch wood, we've got about another six or seven weeks growing. And I should have a decent set. I only want to really grow two or three really good ones, two to match or a set of three to match. So we'll see how we get on. Growing a bit more purple sprouting broccoli, it's the really early stuff, and I'm going to plant that in a pot in the polyton like I did last year and grow it over winter in the warmth of the polytunnel so we get some early stuff that's my watercress with all the rain it's loving it it's absolutely it's about quadrupled in size since I last filmed it <coughs> let's have a wonder like I say all my poppies and stuff have come out but the winds, the wind and the rain's absolutely battered and these were lovely about a week ago but they've been a bit destroyed anyway these are my potatoes, my show potatoes, as you can see, they're absolutely huge now though. Can't see any of the bags or anything. And there's a few more of the eating ones in pots, same thing. They're nearly four foot tall, so... It's just the brains made everything fly, absolutely fly along. And this is, yet again, my show carrots and things. It's just starting to perk up, but... They need some sunshine, they really do. We've not had any sunshine for weeks. And these are my big parsnips, which I'm hopefully... Gonna get to about four or five feet long, but they're quite a way behind last year. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, yet again, oh, nearly tripped up. Going to the other bit. Potatoes again, different types. They're all flowering now. So with the early ones, I usually wait about a week or two after they flowered to start harvesting them. So I've got absolutely tons growing, as you see. That's in the pots in the ground. They're really flying. That's another one of the big marrows, which has now reached the end. I've got a few more, I'll show you those in a bit. But these are those giant uh, Swedes. I've got something to show you here. These came from a 90 pound Swede. And it's it's just, gross. look at it, it's like a football already. But it's just shoving itself out of the ground. And they can grow for about another three or four months, so God knows how big it'll get, and it's just massive leaves, so. We will see how they get on. These are just my normal eating onions again. Like I say, they're not thriving because there's been no sunshine. I've got a few going to seed, as you can see, with the seed heads. And these are the red heat-treated ones, which shouldn't do. But there you go, it just goes to show that they do do. They do do do. And these are my overwinter onions, which some of them are now ripening off and they've flopped over in the wind, so that means they're ready to pull up. They're not a bad size, they're probably about half a pound, so they're, you know, they're decent enough to eat. It's an early crop, gets you an earlier crop. And this is the garlic. This is this giant Solent White overwintered, which is still growing. It's been growing for about eight months now, so there should be some fair old size. And I planted another variety called Marco, which is a hardneck type. I don't grow hardneck. They're the ones that produce a seed. 
stalk like that which you can actually snap off and eat they call them scapes but I've tried it and they're not very they're not very nice but as you can see I've pulled one up because they're ready and they're not a bad size but apparently they don't keep very well hard neck ones compared to soft neck so it's a trial I did but I won't be doing it again I'll just give you a look at this this is a giant marrow it's got a real battering in the wind but you can see I've surrounded it by loads more potatoes to try and keep the wind off but it's a good eight foot long now it's going along 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 and that's the growing tip and if you can see there's a little tiny marrow on the end so if I can get that opened and a male flower to pollinate it I should get one set really early but the trouble is you can get a, a female like the fruiting type and the flower open but there's no male flowers to pollinate it so they just drop off and don't, don't, don't pollinate so we will see anyway that's growing really well considering that I didn't think it survived the wind and then we'll go into my pumpkin bit now I can't believe how well these have grown in the weather I've just managed to keep the frost off early and all the wind off with my protective thing and it really is flying along now if we get some decent weather it should be massive it's just like a terrific all these tendrils on it it just shoots this thing out and what I've been told is that what you can do is you bury the main stem because what it does it sends out a new root from the leaf laterals it call, they call it sorry not not the leaf laterals the um, leaf axles where the leaf meets the, the stem if you bury that bit then what happens is it roots underneath so it roots again into the soil so you get like multiple rooting systems so it gets more energy and hopefully a bigger pumpkin so like I say, I can't uh, complain about that. It's growing really well. And that's another one that's still under some protection, but that's doing well as well, as well as well. So Anyway, that's about it, folks. So, 1st of July, we've had some horrible weather. No sunshine yet, no summer as yet, but things are still growing. I can't complain, given the weather and the conditions. So, we'll just hope we get some summer sometime, eventually. And then things will be massive, so. Anyway, that's about it, folks. I'll show you Ingleborough. Oh, no, you can't. It's under thick fog. See you later.